Liu Bei and Zhang Fei earned a hard-fought victory, successfully defending Shu. Afterward, Tao Qian bequeathed the lands of Shu to Liu Bei before he passed away. Finally, Liu Bei had a land to call his own. Meanwhile, Cao Cao had taken yet another step toward conquering the land. For he had taken the emperor into his custody after rescuing him from the remnants of Dong Zhuo's army. Sympathizing with the plight of the Han court, Liu Bei came to a compromise with Cao Cao. And receiving imperial edicts through Cao Cao, he did battle across the land in the name of the emperor. It was then that a dark shadow appeared to block Liu Bei from carrying out his orders. Lu Bu, who had been under Liu Bei's protection, used his absence to raise an army of his own. And within the blink of an eye, he had captured Shu. Once again, Liu Bei was forced to wander the land until Cao Cao offered his assistance. He agreed to take in Liu Bei and his sworn brothers and mobilized his troops to reclaim Shu. Liu Bei was extremely grateful for Cao Cao's generosity, and together they set out for Xia Pi. There was no way that he could know what cruel, cold, and calculating schemes truly lay within Cao Cao's heart. After defeating Lu Bu at Xia Pi, Liu Bei and his brothers were greeted warmly by Cao Cao. However, Liu Bei was unable to clear the uneasiness from his heart. He chastised himself for being too kind, too soft, and for not possessing the cold cruelty of Cao Cao. It was then that a secret order arrived from the emperor. Cao Cao must be slain! It was a cry for help from the emperor himself, who had grown weary of Cao Cao's tyranny. Liu Bei thought to himself, if he were to slay Cao Cao, to whom he was so indebted, then he would be no better than Lu Bu. As Liu Bei struggled with his indecision, the order was given to eliminate Yuan Shu, who had attempted to usurp the imperial throne. Having bided his time in turning on Cao Cao, Liu Bei saw this as a perfect opportunity. Together with his troops, he led a rebellion in Shu. However, the chaos would once again prove cruel to Liu Bei. Cao Cao's massive army dealt his forces a resounding defeat. And during the course of the battle, he lost track of Guan Yu as well. The chaos continued to torment him, a man of unparalleled kindness and purity. And so he sought the help of Yuan Shao, the one man who could oppose Cao Cao. He soon found himself on the fields of Guandu, where Cao Cao and Yuan Shao were already engaged in battle. As he prepared for this great conflict, he quietly cursed his lack of strength. strength I had. But my actions have seen much blood spilt, and now Guan Yu may be dead. All I ever wanted was to help the suffering of the people however I could. Here, my lord, to join you in your cause as I promised. You would? Why? You could have looked the other way, but you didn't. That is why.
Zhao Yun, I am pleased that you have come to join us. However, because of me, Guan Yu is missing. You need not say anything more, my lord. Lord Guan Yu will return to your side in time. You simply need to be patient. You're right. Please forgive my moment of weakness. This doesn't bode well. It really has got brother down. Ugh. I feel like smashing something. My lord, my lord, remember me? My friend wrote back to me. Uh, yeah. She said something about just being friends. But I'm not giving up. If we win this war and I become a hero, she'll change her mind for sure. Without Lord Guan Yu, you're the only one we can rely on, my lord. Lord Yuan Xiao's son is so lucky. He's married to the famous Lady Jen, you know. She's not just beautiful, you know. She can do some serious damage on the battlefield. That's the kind of wife I want. I heard Lord Liu Bei praise you, my lord. Yes, he said you were courage personified. Yes, he said you were... No man can stand against the likes of Yan Liang and myself. Not even Cao Cao and all of his troops. I don't care who stands before us. They will all fall like lambs to the slaughter. Everyone knows Yan Liang and Wen Cho. The enemy quakes in fear before them. Where's Lord Zhong He? I wonder if he has some secret plan. Who knows? Good luck trying to work out how he thinks. Who knows? Lord Guan Yu! I wonder where he could have gone. Lord Guan... Lord Zhang Fei is terrifying when he's been drinking. And it's getting worse. That's a good little horse. It's not a little. You should say that horse is good. Come on, you wet blankets. Cao Cao's not going to defeat himself. Our Lord may act all high and mighty, but deep down, he's a kind man. That's why he has our respect. Cao Cao will be crushed before Lord Yuan Xiao's might. None can match your glorious nobility, my lord. Once Cao Cao is gone, this land will belong to you, my lord. Cao Cao, for too long now you have stood in my way. Finally, I will rid myself of your meddlesome presence! Your pathetic army is nothing before me. Now you shall witness the power of the nobility! Come, Zhao Yun! Let's blow Cao Cao's army away! Go and assist our allies. Hurry! Oh. The enemy is on its way here. Take defensive positions. Retreat! 
This is not the end. Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me. Lord Yuan Shao has given the order. You are to report to Wu Chao at once. We owe him a debt of gratitude. His orders must be obeyed at once. You're doing great. I will try to live up to your example. I shall own the battle! So you are my next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. Face me if you dare. Necessarily to lose. Turn. Remember that! For yours is the first head I shall see! Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me! Nice job! But still not quite up to my level! A challenge. Come and face me if you dare. You are not so much of a fool that you would not have heard of us. Surely you have realized you cannot win and have come to beg for mercy. Silence. Your head will make a fine offering of gratitude to Lord Sao Tsao. Lord Guan Yu! Guan Yu, you're alive! Yeah, but it looks like he's working for Cao Cao! What is the meaning of this, Liu Bei? I thought Guan Yu was your sworn brother. You have betrayed me! You have ruined everything! Capture Liu Bei at once! This is unfortunate. Hey, we must play Cao Cao's army and Yuan Shao's army. Hey. I do not wish to face either. We must flee and find some way to fix this away from the battlefield. Why would Lord Guan Yu fight for Cao Cao? No, for now I must concentrate on escaping. We are on the back for safety. Come on! Our Lord needs us! in trouble. We have to help him. My path appears to be coming to I an end. I shall own the battle. I am a fortunate man to have you on my side, Jolly. Follow me to victory. You will learn to regret. 
regret this moment. Nice job, but still not quite up to my level. back for now. However, we shall meet in battle again. Face me if you dare. Come on, keep moving. So, you are the famous Liu Bei. My father can see you a dangerous thing. Oh, I shall own a mother betray us like this! Yes, they call. I am sure there is a good explanation for this. You must have faith. So you are my next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. Let us continue. Stand your ground, traitor. I, I will execute you where you stand. My path appears to be a fatal Now's my chance! Take this! My time is now! Thank you to you! One day you will pay for your crimes! It appears we have managed to give our pursuers the slip. It's good to see you safe, my lord. Don't worry about me. What about Guan Yu? Damn. That idiot! How could he fight for Cao Cao? I'll kill him! That is enough. But, brother! I will wait. Brother! We must have faith. I know in my heart that Guan Yu has not forgotten his oath. The heavens had completely abandoned Liu Bei. Without Liu Bei at Guan Du, Cao Cao emerged victorious. He seized the central plains and became the largest force in all of the land. Meanwhile, thanks to the efforts of Zhao Yun, Liu Bei was able to escape the clutches of Yuan Shao and Cao Cao. Searching for a land of his own, he called upon Liu Biao of Jin Province. With no troops or land, Liu Bei had been abandoned by the fates. However, there was still one man who had not yet abandoned him. On you. Hmm. So he's really sided with Cao Cao. All right. You know I always wanted to fight you one time. Zhong Fei. Perhaps another time, my friend. What? On you. Prepare to die. <laughs> Lord. 
brother. At last. At last I have found you. One you. My place is here. Beside you, my lord and brother. Uh... <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Our brother would never betray us! Deep down, I always knew that! <laughs> Liu Bei, a man for whom reality fell far short of his idealistic dreams. He desperately sought an answer to his problems. After Liu Bei fled to Jing, Liu Biao granted him the land of Xinye. For the first time since the chaos had begun, he finally had a place to call home. And there, Liu Bei quietly ruminated on his ambitions. His dream of helping to ease the people's suffering, the cruel reality that he had not accomplished nearly enough. He needed someone who could provide him with a way to turn his dream into a reality. The province of Jing, being located in the center of the land, was bustling with travelers coming and going. Despite its vibrancy, Liu Bei would not easily find his answer there. Then, suddenly, Liu Bei's days of peaceful reflection came to a crashing end. His rude awakening came at the hands of Cao Cao, who was practical to the point of cruelty and had no qualms about using power to take what he wanted. Together with Zhang Fei and his allies, Liu Bei stood before the encroaching threat of Cao Cao's army. Would his ideals be swallowed by the depths of Cao Cao's ambition? Mighty armies now encroach upon Jing province. Cao Cao's methods are heartless and cruel, but what should I do? Maybe you're overthinking things. <laughs> you need to do things your own way. You'll always have us on your side. Interesting. And the sleeping dragon in his ranks. Liu Bei would be unstoppable. And who are you? Who the hell are you? I will get to that eventually. But first, we must defeat Cao Cao. Well, that goes without saying. But why are you the one giving the orders? I harbor... I harbor no ill will towards Lord Liu Bei. I simply am asking you to trust me. Xu Xu is a talented strategist. He is certain to assist our Lord's efforts. Hmm. I wonder. My Lord, it's me. I've been promoted to captain. And have you met my wife? She's just over here. Cheer up, my Lord. It'll happen for you, too. Is Cao Cao the one destined to rule the land? If so, then I fear this chaos will never come to an end. However, I possess not the strength to oppose him. This is my chance, yet I am unable to take advantage of it. Is this as far as I am fated to come? Brother... Who is that Shu Shu? I mean, he seems trustworthy. Just what is Lord Shu Shu doing here? What's he up to? Cao Cao's army's full of well-trained troops. And look at us. We need a plan. Some way of overcoming our lack of numbers and inexperience. Our Lord's indecision is palpable. He is losing his way. Love never changed anything. 
If we don't do something, we'll be swept aside. I'd like to help our Lord out, but I just don't know what to do. Until Cao Cao is gone, our Lord will never have peace of mind. Lord Guan Yu's back, but now our Lord has more worries on his mind. We all love and respect Lord Liu Bei, so why can't we do anything to help him? My lord, is it true you once whipped Cao Bao for refusing a drink? Uh, no, I'm sure you were right to do it. The people love Lord Liu Bei, but that's all he has. I've been thinking about it for ages, and I just don't know what we should do next. If you're feeling down, you could always try a new weapon. Slice away the gloom and all that. Understood. Our enemy is Cao Cao. A frontal assault is too dangerous. We will divide into three units. I will go south. Zhao Yun, you go north. That leaves Zhang Fei for the center. Yes. Come, Lord Zhao. Ah! My brothers are okay with it, but so am I. But that doesn't mean I trust you, all right? No problem. 
problem. I can take out anyone. I can't believe I lost to someone as strong as you. Uh, I'm, I'm still again. waiting for a real challenge. Formation has been broken, and the enemy commander is fleeing the battle. Whoa! What an amazing fighter! Fight me now! For glory! Thanks to Shu Shu, to the power of intelligence. If you say so. My role here is over. But why? Why won't you stay as our strategist? Juga Liang is a reclusive genius. He has the ability to see the bigger picture. I am a mere amateur beside him. You must secure his cooperation. It was a battle of mine. Shushu cleverly directed the bravery of Zhang Fei and the others, and successfully repelled Cao Cao's army. 
It was he who recommended to Liu Bei, the land's most brilliant strategist, Zhuge Liang. Liu Bei believed he had finally found the man he had long been searching for. However, despite paying two visits to Zhuge Liang's home, he still had been unable to meet him. Zhang Fei and Guan Yu were deeply offended, but Liu Bei continued on, paying yet another visit to the home. For if it would help him save the people, he would pay as many visits as it took. And so, it was then that Liu Bei finally found his answer. This is your third visit. What is it that you want so badly from me? I wish to benefit from your wisdom. Tell me what must be done. I know what I want to do. I want to ease the people's suffering. But... But you save one person and it just brings suffering to another. What should I do? <laughs> Benevolence is a tricky thing. Benevolence means valuing the feelings of the people over efficiency or profit. Cao Cao's way. Is to seize control of the land through brute force. While your path leads the people to a land of benevolence. Your path is that of a true leader of men. But to make it more than just a dream, you must have the courage to unite the land. I fear I am incapable, my lord. If you truly want to make it happen, then listen, for I can help you. A world of virtue ruled by righteousness. That was the goal that Zhuge Liang put before Liu Bei. However, with his current strength, such a world was but a far-off dream. His weakness was underscored by the fact that Cao Cao's army had once again launched an attack on the province of Jing. Although Zhuge Liang's clever tactics allowed them to avoid catastrophe, Liu Bei's future seemed grim indeed. Following Liu Biao's death, his successor Liu Tsong surrendered to Cao Cao. With nothing left to fight for, Liu Bei fled from Cao Cao's army and headed south. Time was of the essence, but something was slowing down the pace of his army's march. The reason? Liu Bei had taken all of the people from Jing with him. His virtue served as a beacon for the downtrodden. And Liu Bei too refused to give up on his comrades, who dreamed like he did of a world of peace. Slowed down by the people, 
Liu Bei's army was finally caught by Cao Cao at Changban. Was the world of virtue destined to end as a dream before the overwhelming might of Cao Cao's army? Liu Bei and Zhao Yun, as well as the people themselves, were about to be tested. What? Leave it to me. I will bring him to safety. You must keep moving. Leave these guys to me, boy! All right! Gah! 